electdrive.com. Industry service for electric mobility. We're here at the Ohio stand at the Hanover Trade Show 2016 and here to talk to us about uh, electric cars going further and farther and smart battery charging is uh, Professor Jay Lee from the University of Cincinnati and Director of the Research Center on Intelligent Maintenance System. Good morning. Good morning. So in Germany we always hear electric cars that just don't go far enough and they're way too expensive. Is that the same kind of talk that you're getting across the pond? Well, people always uh, have uh, motivation to drive faster and further, right? We, anytime, anywhere. So I think EV, electrical vehicle, is a great alternative to save energy or save gasoline. But for driver, they have a unlimited desires. They still want to drive far, right? So this is a common worry, actually. People worry about they cannot take EV anywhere they want. Uh, there are several reasons. One, they cannot find charge station easily. Even they can find it, they take a long time to charge. They cannot wait, right? The third, and uh, if the EV has a problem, they cannot get back. Right? So the three worries, I think, that impede the progress of EV in many cities. Yeah. But to take that range anxiety, we obviously need a little bit more battery capacity. But is uh, a bigger battery the only answer to further range? Well. The answer is yes or no. The reason is the uh, bigger battery, the more weight. So the performance and the weight ratio may not be there, number one. Number two, cost. You want affordable mobility, not very expensive mobility, right? I think the one way to do that with a limited amount of battery size and the driver actually has a better way to change it. So when we say smart battery, we're not talking about battery smart. We're talking about the driver, when they drive the vehicle, the road condition, the behavior can actually optimize, maximize the performance. That gives you extra XYZ unknown mobility. Unlimited mobility and also a more exact calculation of how far you can go. Yes. Well, yeah, p typically today's uh, we call the uh, battery management system, uh, BMS, is based on how the battery charge into charging and from the system point of view, not from the mobility point of view. For example, if you drive and I drive, uh, we have different behavior. Actually, during a traffic jam, right, there could be actually 10 to 15, sometimes even 18% difference of the mobility range. But that's not under BMS system today. So if I drive carefully or with good skills, I can extend a mile, it's quite good actually. But that, so, so you, have a, you don't have unlimited mile, right? Nobody has, but you can have a controllable mile, which is good. But when you think in terms of uh, the future of mobility, so in terms of, I want to say, car sharing, and you don't have just have one driver, how does the battery calculate uh, the exact range then using all that data? I think it's a, it's a matter of the transparency and interactions. So for example, you and I driving a car, yeah, I know we can drive farther, but I like to know the, the actual reality, how I as driver can respond to that situation. Right? Doesn't matter you drive, I drive. I like to see information is precision. Today, the battery information is not precision. It's an estimate based on the battery. I want a real precision based on the traffic condition, the driver behavior, as well as the environment. But that is a precision prediction. Yes. So, and talking in terms or a little bit more general, do you believe that electric mobility is a disruptive technology? That meaning at one point and almost overnight the combustion engine will be history? Well, it's a one alternative. You've got fuel cell, you have other means to do that. And also, you have a lot of hybrid vehicle, a plug-in hybrid, also give you a, a balanced benefits, right? So they keep the legacy function as a gasoline or diesel, but in the meantime, they keep the electrical as an as a, as a additional you know, kind of function. So give you both. So I would say, I don't think any technology is called disruptive. Only a driver can be disruptive. So when driver become more confident in what they have, and that will disrupt the market. 
And then what about in terms of connectivity? Will software become more important than hardware at one point? Well, the software in general can make the invisible world become visible, right? So a car has a speed, horsepower, and the gasoline mileage, and safety, and uh, maybe some brand name. But the, the gaps is called invisible. So when I have a software, I can make a lot of invisible things happen, right? I can connect to the world. For example, before you drive one kilometer ahead of a, a something, the car reminds you, uh, one kilometer ahead has some pothole ahead. Wow, that is cool. But that's not today's technology can do. Nobody can detect one kilometer ahead because the sensor are network to other vehicles information. So that's pass on next vehicle. Hey, if you drive in another kilometer, you have a pothole, be careful. I think that is a smart, predictive smart, yeah. And uh, in terms of years, when will we see that kind of technology? It's coming, it's coming, depending on how far you want to demonstrate. I think the self-driving vehicle is a very good uh, augmented drive, uh, mobility, help people, right? Uh, for blind people to drive vehicles is wonderful. Uh, even your tire, I can have a, set up a cruise mode, self-driving mode. That's another way, not just 100% replace people. I don't think that's the only reason. I think the autonomous driving, it can help people. In the for um, uh, disability for people who have uh, different situations, right? So I think we will blend that into reality in the next few years. You will see some good step start, start realizing before the full demonstration of a high 100% you know, uh, self-driving conditions. Yeah. And until that day, what drivetrain gets you from, uh, from and to work? Well, I think that there are many to, ways of today to uh, the mobility function. Uh, people can rent a car and uh, have a sharing a car. You have a zip car. Then you have a Uber. You have many ways. So I think that really depends on affordability and convenience and safety. The three things, right? So people are looking for an aff affordable way to do it. One day, and then people have a car, but when they go out, people may have a shared rental car. You know, so I think there's a lot of way to change the way we live, not just based on vehicle. I think based on mobility and innovation of a lifestyle. I think that will change us. Well, Professor Lee, thank you very much uh, for taking a look into the crystal ball. Let's hope that will all come true as you say it will. Well, thank you very much for, for the question. Well, I think we're all going to make it happen.